Welcome to Maximize Your Influence, your resource for the top persuasion, influence, and negotiation techniques that will help you maximize your success in life and business. And now, here are your hosts, Kurt Mortensen and Steve Olson. Welcome to another episode of Maximize Your Influence. I'm Steve Olson. I've got Kurt Mortensen here with me. Kurt, what's going on, man? What's new? Man, I'll talk about anything but politics. I'm getting sick of all that ranting and raving and both sides and everyone trying to prove their worth. But anyway, so we guarantee we're not going to talk about politics on this call because I know all our listeners are getting sick and tired about what's going on in Washington. Well, geez, you're cranky today. I am cranky because... People ask me, what about this and this? And actually, a politician will call me, what about this and what about that? I'm like, can't we all just get along? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that, but they're so polarized about their right, the other side's wrong, and back, back and forth. And I'm thinking I talk about politics on a non politic call, but we'll just move on from there. How's that? Yeah, you're not supposed to talk about religion and <laughs> politics either, but hey, I'll go there really quick. The fact that nobody can agree on anything and the government's not doing anything is just fine with me. <laughs> Maybe nothing's better than something, huh? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's like some, the some truth to that. The little the little toddler that wants to pick up the newborn baby and hold it. It's just better that that not happen. So yeah, okay. There's some truth to that. As we talk about politics in a non-political call today. Yeah, we cross <laughs> that. So send your hate mail to us at maximizeyourinfluence at gmail dot com. We yeah, just attention, Steve at bank. Do it that way, so I don't get him. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Well. We wanted to continue with part B of our interview with Jerry. There was so much good content and no possible way under the sun that we could get into one episode. So, quick intro today. We've got the blunder that I talked about last week, and then we're going to roll into our interview with Jerry. What do you say to that? I love it. That was great information from Jerry, and we're going to have more information. And oh, oh. Don't, don't, don't. There's the sound. There it is. I was at the trade show for the self-directed IRA investors in Orlando, and I was with a gentleman that I work with. He's a very successful uh, real estate investor. And we got approached by one of these other vendors who wanted to sell us something, and they were selling us raw land in California. And mm -hmm. our investment strategy happens to not agree with raw land. We don't, we don't like that. It's very speculative, and we don't think that it, well, we think it's basically gambling. <laughs> and you should have seen this lady, Kurt. She was the queen of persuasion vomiting. And she brought an example of a piece of land. And she said, look at this thing. This thing was listed for $100,000 back in 2008. And my boss said, okay, it was listed for $100,000 in 2008. What did it sell for? And she said, it, it was listed for 100000 That was at the top of the market. And can you imagine what you could buy it for now and how cheap it would be? And he said, I understand that, but what did it sell for? And she says, no, you're not hearing me. Warren Buffett has purchased land in this community for his wind turbine and his solar energy factories. And he says to her again, I understand that, but what did it sell for? And she says, no, you're not hearing me. The guys from Google, Sergey or whatever the guy's name is that owns Google, they are buying land in this area because it's the last available land in Los Angeles County. That's all that's left. And he goes, I understand that, but what did it sell for? I mean, we've ridden this horrific merry-go-round of vomit. So guess what, Kurt? Did the land ever actually sell? I would guess not. It absolutely did not. So <laughs> the, the blunder here is vomiting persuasive information and using the, the third-party credibility, dodging the question, Warren Buffett guys from Google. The prospect had a very simple question, and if you're prepared for something like that, that's okay. You could have worked your way out of the fact that the land didn't sell. But wow, it just felt like a kind of a weaselly witness on the stand that didn't want to answer the question. It was a huge blunder, and it actually ended up attracting a crowd. And, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a, an absolute train wreck. Let me d dissect that. I mean... She was used to social validation, which is great, but the challenge was there was no need, there was no want, no what's in it for me, so it had the opposite effect. And the way she was dodging that question is obvious to everyone else, but I guess her. And every time she did that, credibility and trust dropped, 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 dropped to the point to where even if she did come up with a great response to that question, 
it didn't matter because the trust gauge was getting near empty. And you're like, whatever, between the vomit, social validation at the wrong time, dodging the question, not answering any objections, she gets the blunder of the week. And we'll be calling her house and giving her a prize, although I probably don't know who it is. But it would be fun to start doing that, though. Yeah, you want to know what was really awkward about it? What's that? <laughs> she was on the same flight as me home. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just should have been the persuasion master and says, you know what? Let me tell me why we didn't buy from you. <laughs> yeah. That would have been, I... And then charge her $2 million because that's what have been worth to her because that's how much she's going to lose in sales anyway. Oh, my goodness. It was, it was horrific. I said hi to her when I was getting off the plane because she was sitting back in the aisle waiting for a chance to get her bags out of the overhead. And, and she kind of looked at the floor and it was Hey, you know what? These blunders, they're bad for everybody. <laughs> they're just not fun. It's just embarrassing all the way around. It is. It is. So uh, don't vomit those features and benefits. If you're going to give evidence of the value of your product, you got to think it through. What are some of these, these glaring errors in the logic? Because people will call you on that. And it's okay if it's a good example. It doesn't have to be 100% intact, but you have to be ready to answer the questions in a tactful way that is going to you know, resonate with people instead of just dodge and dump these uh, credibility bombs and just say Warren Buffett over and over again. And not only that, if you were the type of person that hated Warren Buffett, they were using that as social validation, or Google, that validation would have the opposite effect. She was just data dumping and vomiting, hoping something would stick. And we all know nobody likes to be vomited on, literally yes. or figuratively. And I know the listeners are thinking, well, I never vomit like that. Well, do yeah, you? Right. You might. It's... I would say stage. you are, and fix it. <laughs> yes, yes, when, especially when you're persuading somebody that makes you feel uncomfortable. The first instinct is data dump. Just dump it all on them. Maybe that'll impress them. Yep, yeah. get rid of that instinct. Well, okay, that's a completely disastrous blunder. But let's get off of that, and let's cut to part B of our interview with Jerry Clark. Let's hear from Jerry. Jerry, Steve here. I know you've got people that uh, pay a lot of money for your your consulting. So I'm going to ask you a question about the personality types and obviously understanding that people pay good money for this. So keep it simple, if you would, and, and uh, don't give away all your stuff for free. Not that you would anyway. But <laughs> I wanted to ask you, if, could you give us a quick crash course on each of the colors and kind of what you would really represent each of one of them to be? What would be something good to know about each of these colors? Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great question. So for the listeners, I know a lot of people are listening. Maybe you're driving in your car and so forth. So if you're driving in your car, of course, you don't want to write nothing down that I'm about to share. You can obviously go back and re-listen to this over again uh, when you have a pen and paper. So you can actually jot some of this down because a visual representation will actually benefit you quite greatly. So here's what I would suggest you do. Once you do get into a position where you have a pen and paper, just jot this down. For those of you who are driving right now, just you can visualize this as well. So if you just draw a vertical line on a sheet of paper and then draw a horizontal line intersecting right in the middle. So you got a horizontal line, you got a vertical line, which means you got four quadrants now. And so in the very top of that vertical line, you write the word relationships. Just write the word relationships. At the very bottom of that line, of that vertical line, you write the word task. T-A-S-K-S, -S, task. Now, the very left side of that horizontal line, as you're looking at it, you want to write the word indirect, indirect. On the right-hand side, the far right-hand side of that horizontal line, you want to write direct. So now you have these, these four little things here, and you have four quadrants. And at the upper left-hand quadrant is where you will write the word yellow, so that's where your yellows go in the upper left-hand quadrant. That's where they're relationship-oriented and they're indirect. Those are what I call the yellows. So I'll explain uh, just a, a little bit about the yellows. Now, the upper right-hand quadrant is what we call the blues. So you're going to write the blues down there. The lower left-hand quadrant is what you're going to classify as the greens. So you're going to go ahead and write greens there. They're more task-oriented and more indirect. And then at the lower right-hand quadrant, the task-oriented and direct, you write reds, okay? So those are your four quadrants that you have there. You have people that are more relationship-oriented and indirect. Those are yellows. People are more relationship-oriented, but they're more direct. Those are the blues. 
And then you have your task oriented indirect. Those are the greens, the task oriented and direct. Those are the reds. Now, let's take a look at this real quickly. Relationship oriented. These simply are people that are more relationship oriented. In other words, they they love being around people a lot more. Um, they have no problem being in a company of people. And by the way, these are the yellows and the blues. They're the upper quadrant there. The only difference really between the yellows and the blues is that you have the yellows that are indirect, which means they take their time with things. They move slower. They talk slower. They are less confrontational. These are people that are more indirect, which are more of the yellows and the greens. And then the blues and the reds are more direct, which means they move faster, talk faster, talk louder. Uh, more confrontational. You know, they don't get ulcers. They give them to others. <laughs> <laughs> and so the bottom line is that you have these four quadrants. So if you take a look at the yellows, now the yellows, these people are open, which means that they're more relationship oriented and they're more indirect. So these people are easy to get along with. These people have great listening skills. They love to be around people and listen to what their challenges are, what are some of the things that they are looking to achieve because they want to see if there's a way that they can help them. Uh, they are team players. They are very loyal. They're dedicated people. They, once again, they do not like conflict. They want to avoid conflict as much as possible. Uh, these are relatively peaceful people. Their demeanor are very peaceful. They're non-threatening and uh, they're very patient. I mean, so these are some of the characteristics. If you look at characteristics of yellows, these are some of the characteristics of yellows. I mean, I can go on and on and on in, in regards to what they like and what they don't like. Um, they don't like pushy and aggressive people. It really irritates them a great deal. They don't like bullies. They don't like confrontation or loud and obnoxious people. I mean, I, mean, I could go on and on with some of the things they don't like. Um, and I can go on with the things they like, like peace, they love, togetherness, harmony, all those type of things are the things that the yellows uh, like. So as people are listening right now, you know, you might be thinking, oh, wow, okay, I do have some of those within me, but it's not really resonating in a big way. Yeah, that's true, because we all have a little bit of all this in us. So every color that I mentioned, we all have a little bit of all of, of some of, we have some of these characteristics within us in each of these colors. But there is a dominant one that we tend to operate from and that's why it's important for you to understand what is the dominant one that you operate from. You'll know yourself a lot better once you understand that. But also, what is the dominant one of other people? Because this is the way that you will know what language, behavioral language, they want to communicate in. So then that way you can learn how to decrease their tension and increase the cooperation if that's what you're seeking in a relationship. So now let's look at the blues. The blues are more... Uh, relationship oriented, just like the yellows. The main difference is that they are more direct. And so whereas the yellows like to listen, for example, the yellows love to listen and be around people and listen and listen and listen. The blues love to be around people, but they love to talk. So the blues talk. I mean, they talk all day. They go to sleep talking. Some of them wake up, you know, talking. That's what they do. And they are very persuasive people almost naturally just because they're so charming they're so they have a lot of charisma in general just because they're so playful uh they are enthusiastic type people they are funny they are refreshing they are convincing um they're animated uh, i mean i can go on and on with some of the things that the blues are but also understand that the blues they have certain things they like certain things they don't like one of the things they don't like is they don't like things that are boring they don't like uh, people that are boring <laughs> they don't like sports that are boring i mean everything has to be fun if it's fun and exciting to them then they are excited about it and it has they, to be high octane they're high octane exactly uh you steve you got it and they like to have fun i mean they are the life of the party i mean that's you can think of blues you can just think of party they love to party they love to have fun and, and that's a really big thing for them. And they are big picture thinkers. In other words, they are not technical. They don't get into the technical details. Uh, they are just the big picture thinkers. So that's something to understand in regards to the blues. Now, speaking of technical, let's go down to the greens because the greens are task oriented and they are indirect. What that means is that they really don't require a lot of people around them. As a matter of fact, they prefer that a lot of people are not around them. And they are people that will do just fine being alone as far as doing 
uh, work alone, as far as uh, spending time alone. I mean, they really don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's okay for them to have families and so forth, of course, but I'm saying it, it's okay for them to feel very comfortable just being by themselves, reading a book or working on some kind of a project that involves solving something or whatever the case may be. These are very left brain people. In other words, these are people that are analytical. They are fact oriented. They are documentation focused. A very powerful standpoint, though, they are more dependable because typically when they say they're going to do something, they will, number one, remember to do it. And number two, it will be important for them to get it done. And so they typically will write it down somewhere. They typically have it all filed somewhere. They know exactly how long it's going to take them to do it. And they are doing it when you're not even thinking they're doing it. And they will tell you that they have finished when you forgot all about it, especially a blue. A blue have been forgot about what they said, but the green is going to be very clear and specific about getting this stuff done. So that's one thing about greens. They're good problem solvers. These are people are precise. They are accurate. Um, they expect you to be accurate, too. See, that's another thing uh, that greens really like is they like you to be accurate just like they are, you know, because, of course, the way people are. That's how they tend to prefer other people to be. That's what we're talking about here as far as this doing to others the way you want to be done unto, as Kurt, I've heard you say in some of your programs as well, instead of doing unto others only as the way you want to be done unto. Now, that's obviously very good. There are ways that us as human beings want to be done unto in general, but if you really drill down and get very specific, you guys have all heard there are different strokes for different folks. So you, you want to understand that there's some people that are simply motivated by something different. So in regards to the Greens, the one thing they don't like is they really don't like disorganization. They don't like being wrong. Uh, they don't like when other people they're around are not prepared. They don't like a whole bunch of spontaneity. They don't like a whole bunch of surprises. I mean, they, Everything has to be booked in a calendar almost with these people. So, you know. <laughs> so anyway, you want to understand that about the greens. Now, you know, there, there's lots of benefits to each of these behavioral styles, by the way. And there are lots of things that can also hold them back from moving forward with each of these behavioral styles. And I have a six hour training course that goes over all that. So obviously we don't have time to go over all that right now. But let's go ahead and go to the reds. Now, the reds, these people are task oriented, just like the greens are. But the difference is that the reds are direct, just like the blues are. So they're direct. So they move faster. They talk faster. They do things faster, basically. So the reds are people that they want to stick to the point. They don't really require all the relationships. So you don't have to go show them pictures of your family and so forth because they don't even have pictures of their own family. So why should they be looking at yours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they are very specific about let's get this done. Let's get to the point. Let's stick to the point. Let's get off the point and let's get to the next point. So they are always on the go, just moving to get stuff done. They love challenges. This is another thing that's important. They love telling you about their credentials and how important they are. And they want to know how important you are as well, because they like talking to other people that are important. And they really like to stay connected to people of power because they are all about power. They want to be in control of things all the time. I mean, these are, I guess, what you can call the control freaks and so forth that you've heard those those words right there. But at the same time, I don't want it to seem like they're all, there's, that's all negative stuff, it sounds like. And in many cases, it could be. But they also um, are the people who have the most propensities, typically, of taking massive action towards their goals, whatever their goals are, because they are very, very goal-oriented. They are risk takers, too. They will thrive on opposition. They are independent people. They are um, self-sufficient. They are pretty dynamic. I mean, these are characteristics that can describe reds that are actually pretty powerful. Mm, they can be domineering, too. I mean, so it goes back and forth with all of these behavioral styles. So one of the keys, then, in just briefly mentioning some of this, these behavioral styles and a little bit about them is to understand that each of them are motivated by different things. Each of them are excited by different things. They are striving towards different things. Their decisions are made differently. There's so much that you can really understand when it comes to these different behavioral styles. And let me just tell everyone this is for me, for myself, 
once I started to understand this information, a few things happened to me. Number one, I tripled my income in 90 days. Once I really started to take a look at this information about behavioral styles and started to learn this information and started to use it, I didn't even have to have mastered it yet. I started using this information and I tripled my income in 90 days. That's number one. Number two, I actually became more pleasant to be around when it came to other people. And the reason why is because my behavioral style is one of those styles that is I'm task oriented and I am direct. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we call a red. That's my primary behavioral style is red. Now, my secondary behavioral style is blue. So I'm what they call a red blue. Here's the point to that. The point is that I used to, before I understood this information, I used to think everyone should be like me because anyone who's like me, those are people that are cool. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> those are the people that understand things. They know how to get things done and so forth. <laughs> and obviously, being that I am predominantly a red, 85% of the population is not red. Only about 15% of the population are predominantly red. So that means about 85% of the people that I come in contact with are going to not be just like me. So I'm going to have a challenge with over 8 out of 10 people that I come in contact with. There's going to be some kind of a major tension going on that might not get resolved. And so that doesn't mean that I can't go around being successful in life. It just means that it may take a lot longer. I might have to go through a lot more, uh, maybe a lot more stress involved and so forth. So I want everyone to understand that. But once I started to understand this information, started using it and started to become what I call a chameleon. I talk about this in my Magic of Colors program, becoming a chameleon, which means how you can learn how to be more effective with the other behavioral styles. Whether or not you are predominantly a yellow or a green or a red or a blue, it doesn't matter because I teach you how to be more effective with these different behavioral styles based on all the things that I've learned over all these years. And once you start to do that, you're going to be more at ease with people in general. So that was the second thing that happened for me. The third thing is that it allowed me to have a sustainable family life that was much more enjoyable than what it ever would have been without learning this information. I mean, it just really opened up because my kids, I have four boys, and they are all the whole range of behavioral styles. I got one that is predominantly a green. I got one that is predominantly a yellow. I got two that are red blues. You know, <laughs> and so yeah. if I did not understand how these people were, and my wife is predominantly yellow. So if I didn't understand how they operate, then we would have some major, major, major challenges going on in the household. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure if I would have been able to be in a committed marriage over all this time if it wasn't for understanding this information about behavioral styles. That's how important it really is. And, and I really do hope uh, some people are really saying, you know what? Yeah, this is something that I may want to plug into and learn a little bit more about. Good point. Good point. I'm glad you're sharing that with our listeners because you've nailed it right on the on the head to where if you could really learn to adapt yourself, to understand other people and to realize that there are different personalities. And it's interesting. I ask people sometimes in, in seminars, I say, well, what is the best type of personality to have? And they all kind of get quiet because you know what they're thinking. They're yeah. thinking it's their own personality, right. exactly. and that's okay, and that's great, but we need to learn to adapt and adjust and realize we're different, and that's what makes the world great. That's what makes relationships great, and I'm really glad that you were able to share that to our listeners today. But let me ask you one last thing here. For our listeners, what is that one takeaway you want them to remember you by? What is the most powerful thing that you could really have them grasp to take their life and their income and their relationships to the next level? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. And here's what I would say for people is after really taking some time to think about the questions that people had asked me when I retired early. I retired when I was a young kid. I was 26 years old when I so-called retired the first time. That's when I just took time off to relax. I had a bunch of money and I just like, you know what, I'm just going to relax. I'm going to travel the world and so forth. And I had a lot of people asking me, Jerry, so how did you do it? You know, what was your secret to business success and, and being able to create the type of results that allowed you to just be able to do nothing really? I mean, you know, you can just relax and just spend time on your own calling there at a young kid, 26 years old. What in the world was that all about? How did you do that? And I tell them, I said, look, here's how I came up with this, uh, this whole concept. As I 
after hearing that question so many times, I came up with the concept of something I call the success triangle. And the success triangle says, if you want to be massively successful in anything you do in life, it requires you mastering three areas. Number one is your internal communication. So your internal communication is how you communicate with yourself, has to do with your belief systems and philosophies and ideologies and all that. But you want to be able to master your internal communication. Things are not going your way. Are you able to bounce back or not? Do you have resiliency or not? Is there a way to create that resiliency? I mean, all this type of stuff. We know I've heard that it's not what happens, but it's, it's, it's how we interpret it and all that type of stuff. Every, all of that has to do with the internal communication. If you can start mastering your internal communication, it's going to impact your life in a positive way more than you can possibly imagine. So that's one big pillar that I talk about that's critical. The second pillar is the pillar of external communication. And external communication is how you communicate with others. And this is where the magic of colors come into place. So I got this program called the Magic of Colors. And I got this program that, Kurt, I know you'll find fascinating, called the Magic of Influence. And both of these programs deal with the whole concept of understanding people and being more persuasive with other people. And I remember when I interviewed you, Kurt, in regards to, I think it was your first book, your Maximum Influence book, uh, where you talked about your 12 key points there. A lot of people have emailed us, letting us know how much value they've gotten from that. Because once people understand the importance of influence and the importance of persuasion, especially when you're doing it from an ethical standpoint, and when you're coming from a position of contribution, and once they understand that and how important it is, then they're willing to learn what's going to be required for them to be more effective at being able to produce results and being able to share with other people products, goods, and services that could benefit them in a, in a great way. So that's the reason why the external communication strategies are critical to master is because that is one of the key pillars, I believe, that's going to set people up to where they can create magnificent success in life. And the third pillar is what I call the technical knowledge. And that just simply means whatever business that people are in, whether it's direct sales or whether it's insurance sales or whether it could be real estate, it could be uh, working at, for a major corporation, whatever it is that they're doing, whatever profession that they are in, you want to learn how to engage effectively in that profession. So you're going to learn the technical aspects of that particular profession. So to sum this up, those three areas, I believe, if a person took the time to master those three areas, their internal communication, their external communication, and their technical knowledge for whatever industry that they are engaged in as a profession, then that will allow them to set themselves up and their family up in ways that they can never imagine. And so that's what I would say is make sure that you begin a journey that's going to allow you to master those three areas. And mastering the external communication, I mean, you have it right here by plugging into the blog that you guys are plugged into in the podcast and with Kurt and Steve, they're coming out with all of this valuable information, this valuable knowledge to provide you with information that's going to assist you in mastering that second key pillar, which is the external communication. And I would definitely suggest that you make sure you plug in and let other people know about it because it's one of the most important areas of life that people can really get a good grasp around that can allow them to be more effective in whatever they do. So, that in general, Kurt, based on your question, is what I would say is for someone to master those three areas, the internal communication, external communication, technical know-how. They already got a really good jump start on the external communication just by having access to all the information you and Steve are providing them with. And then you guys are also bringing in other experts who are able to share insights and information regarding to influence and persuasion, personality and behavior and, and all that the external communication. I, I, I love that. I think that's awesome. So, um, yeah, I appreciate that. That's great. I really appreciate you guys, uh, you know, asking me to come to come on and share some of this information. We're glad to have you and well said. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, yeah, Jerry. So we've got to wrap it up here, but the, where can people learn more? Well, I mean, what I would say is for people, there's a couple things. For, for people that are listening and been on your podcast, um, I want to give them something for free. One of the things I want to give them some for free is I want to give them for free is we have what is called a magic of influence or I'm sorry, a magic of uh, colors reference guide. And it's a, it's a, it's like a cheat sheet, so to speak. It's uh, four pages. Each page is dedicated to one particular behavioral style. 
one page dedicated to yellows, one blues, one greens, one red, and it basically has a whole list of you know what this particular behavioral style like, what they don't like, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what they're motivated by, what they're striving towards. All of that is on one sheet of paper, so you can just do one, you know, just really in a glance. You can go ahead and do that for anyone who wants to get that for free. Just send my support crew a, a quick email and just let them know. Just support at clubrhino.com. If you send them, just say colors reference guide for free. Tell them you were listening to uh, the podcast with uh, Stephen Kurt or Max, Maximize Your Influence or however you want to say that. As long as we know that it was from listening to this podcast and they will go ahead and send you a free, no, nothing else. They're not sending you any other thing. They're just going to send you that reference sheet, those four pages for free. If you want to get the Magic of Colors audio program, for those of you who really want to go deeper and really get all of this information in more detail, then you just go to clubrhino.com and click on where it says uh, CD products. I think they're downloadable products as well. Yeah. And you can click on downloadable products or CD based on if you want the physical CDs or if you want and download, um, if you want the download version, and you can pick up the Magic of Influence audio program. So that's what I would suggest for people to do. That's awesome. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing that favor, everybody. Just to contact Jerry on that email. What was that email one more time? Uh, support at clubrhino.com. Support at clubrhino.com to get that uh, quick guide to the the personalities, the colors that Jerry's been talking about. Hey, Jerry, thanks a ton for coming on the show. All right. Hey, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Kirk. I appreciate you guys. Keep up the great work. Now I'm about to go and listen to some more episodes of Maximize Your Influence. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being here. Talk to go, you go, go. See ya. Okay, Kurt. So there we had it. Jerry, he's been very successful. He explains personality types in a very simple way. There's a lot of different schools of thought on this. This is Jerry's interpretation, which I think is very solid. I think you told me once that there are, is it 32 or 64 different personality <laughs> types? I don't remember. Oh, there's so many different schools of thought out there with the personality, and some peg it at 32, some say 16, some say 8. And when you go to people, okay, let's look at the 32 personalities, or they start to drool on themselves, or eyes roll back in their head, and he puts it in such a way that it's very simple. People can grasp it. They understand it. He uses colors. I mean, some people use, oh, it's a turtle, it's a squirrel, it's a thinker, it's a feeler, it's a steady, it's an amiable, it's a, a choleric, like he mentioned. He's assertive, he's an owl, and that just makes people so confused. And what Jerry brings to the table is just a very simple way to understand most personalities. And if you just grasp a couple things there and start implementing them, just like Jerry, you'll see your income dramatically increase. Yep, he's he's a product of it. And one of my favorite quotes by Jerry, this, I might be butchering it, but he says, your product is people. Learn more about people than your product, and you will make millions. And I think that's very valid. It is. And one of the ones we've all have uh, worked with is Jim Rohn. He's a great speaker and mentor. And he said when he'd learned how to persuade and influence and understand how people thought, he went from six digits to seven digits in his income. So along the same lines, but that's how powerful this information is. Well, that's pretty good stuff. Everybody, thanks for listening to another episode of Maximize Your Influence, and we'll catch up with you next week. See you next week.